This protest march grew increasingly disorderly until it finally led to a confrontation between Chicago police and the protesters. About 100 demonstrators were arrested. The primary target was the American Medical Association, which is headquartered in Chicago. An AMA spokesman said it supported changes that would provide insurance for those now considered to be not insurable. The question, should prominent gays and lesbians who want their sexuality kept secret be exposed by other homosexuals? Outweek editor Gabriel Rotello says going public could improve the image of homosexuals. For a long time, people had been deliberately suppressing the fact that some of the most famous and powerful people in the United States are gay. Some of the biggest role models for our whole society are gay. And we began to question why it is that we have always accepted that. The danger of dragging someone out of the closet against their will is that it becomes intrusive and a violation of privacy of which our movement for freedom and equality is based on. In some cities, gay activists have demonstrated against politicians they say are gay and hypocritical because they don't support gay issues. The case of an ROTC midshipman barred from today's drill at MIT eventually could help change the policy that keeps homosexuals from military service. The story of Robert Bedecker has drawn national attention to the issue. Not only was the MIT senior kicked out of ROTC last fall after he realized he was gay and informed authorities, but the Navy also ordered Bedecker to repay the $39,000 cost of his university education. I want to serve my country, and I only have good things to say about ROTC and the ROTC program. But until the military starts judging people on their, on their abilities and their performance rather than their sexual orientation, universities should not support ROTC. Now, Holabaugh and others are seeking support at campus rallies nationwide. Anti-ROTC sentiment is increasing for the first time since the Vietnam War. The issue today is gay rights. The Defense Department views homosexuality as incompatible with military service and cites morale, discipline, and security among the reasons. Yet Massachusetts Congressman Gary Studs, a homosexual, obtained and released Pentagon reports disputing that. Those reports show very clearly that gay men and women function as well, and in one case there was even the contention that if anything possibly better uh, in the armed forces than uh, their non-gay brothers and sisters. The renewed debate has prompted many Pentagon officials to predict that the armed forces will be open to homosexuals in a few years. parade started as it always has with a lesbian motorcycle unit who call themselves dykes on bikes and it continued as it traditionally does hours of the outrageous and the commonplace aiming at a basic point we raise children we pet dogs we run libraries we run fortune 500 companies where your milkman obviously the world has survived just fine with 10 percent of the population being homosexual under the playfulness though serious issues Gay couples say they are denied family rights like social security, medical benefits, and inheritance that are automatic for straights. Gays say the war on AIDS isn't going fast enough. And reports of anti-gay violence are rising. I was jumped on the street by three white older men last Saturday night, one of whom had a baseball bat. I have two cracked ribs and a cracked finger. Uh, my first day out was yesterday and today. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Halloween is traditionally the night when San Francisco gays get together to celebrate their lifestyle. So they considered it a witch hunt when a Texas evangelist picked this night to launch a crusade against this city's pagan ways. It was a classic confrontation. It's a question of education. It's good that they came to see us because now they can see face to face just how lovely and beautiful we all are. There was lots of arguing, but no converts on either side. The parents in my troop knew that I was gay. They wanted me as a leader.
scouting has been so important to Curran, he still has his uniform in the closet. But when Boy Scout officials found out he had come out of the closet, they fired him. He filed suit, charging violation of a California law forbidding discrimination. Are gay people entitled to participate in American life, in every facet of American life? Can we be leaders? Can we um, work with kids? Can we do everything that everybody else does? And the answer is yes. Scouting officials say being a Boy Scout leader is a privilege, not a right. Lee Sneath is a spokesman for the Boy Scouts of America. We do not feel like that homosexuals are appropriate role models. We also feel that homosexuality is inconsistent with the basic American family values that scouting stresses. Rattlesnakes, are they good or bad? Bad. Bad? Good. bad? bad. good. Well, the scout leaders say they are not concerned a homosexual scoutmaster would molest his charges. But it is a possibility that weighs on the minds of parents like Ernie Brecht. If your son was in a troop and you found that there was going to be a homosexual troop leader, what would you do? I would absolutely move him into another unit. Absolutely. When the trial comes to conclusion, Curran will try to convince the court he poses no threat and that it would be un-American to deny him the opportunity to be a scoutmaster just because he is gay while lawyers for the Boy Scouts will claim homosexuality is immoral and American values would be threatened if scouts like these had a gay leader. The city of San Francisco has rewritten some old rules on social relationships and those new rules took effect on Valentine's Day. Gay, lesbian and unmarried heterosexual couples may now get official recognition as domestic partners. Hundreds of couples turned up at City Hall yesterday to obtain this new symbolic legal status. Police expected the gay rights issue to explode when more than 2,000 people showed up to debate it. Activists traded pleas and protests, some waving the Bible, others the Bill of Rights. God says that it is wrong, it is an abomination for a man to lie with a man as a female. This is not a moral issue. This is not a religious debate. This is a human rights issue. After six hours of this, city and county officials grew tired. They cut off testimony and voted. Could the clerk please announce the vote? Motion carries four to three. They passed an amendment forbidding discrimination against homosexuals in housing, public accommodations, and in some cases, employment. Over the past decade, San Francisco's war on AIDS has been fought with activism. Protests against government inaction and demonstrations of gay pride. Residents have not waited for federal or state help. We're not trying to promote anything. We're not trying to enhance anything. We're just trying to stop a deadly disease. Those on the front lines can only hope their city's dedication will be enough to battle a second decade of AIDS. Margaret Larson, NBC News, San Francisco. Current Pentagon policy says having homosexuals in the military undermines morale, discipline, and leadership. But critics say the military is reflecting a prejudice. Basically, they're saying the presence of gay people in the service would upset other people. Now, I think it's best to look at that point historically and to realize that it's the exact same reason, the exact same uh, mentality that was used to keep blacks and later women out of the military. Greg Greeley just resigned his commission as an Air Force captain. But the day before his discharge, Greeley led this gay pride parade in Washington. Despite his exemplary record, he was called in for interrogation. There are a lot of people, individuals in the military, um, who disagree with the policy and, and feel it's time to be changed. Um, unfortunately, they don't have that many stars on their shoulders yet. Someday they will. But attitudes are changing. Patrick Batchelor just got out of the Navy and was a member of the President's Honor Guard. I definitely think that homosexuals should be permitted into the military. I'm pro-choice. <laughs> no. Why? Um, I just I believe that everybody's equal. Everyone, everyone's equal. I don't believe there should be any segregation at all. And a new internal army document suggests that at least some in the military also think it's time to change the policy. 
The proposal says homosexuals should be eligible to serve without restriction. But whether it's the best and the brightest at Annapolis or heroes of Desert Storm, officially the Pentagon says no change is being considered. The policy by the military is outmoded based on stereotypes. Military within the last year has discharged almost a thousand service members based on um, their sexual orientation and that within the last 10 years they've discharged over 13,000. We call upon President Bush, Secretary Cheney, and Congress to act at once to reverse the policy banning lesbians and gay men from service in the armed forces. U.S. military officials won't discuss the case, nor the possibility of changes in the military's anti-homosexuality policies. In West Hollywood, reaction to the veto was swift, angry, and deafening. We're sick and tired of being abused and beaten and bashed and killed while this governor does nothing to save our lives. We are going to fight back. Governor Wilson released a statement Sunday saying that the anti-discrimination bill would encourage lawsuits, burden business, and make California less competitive. Gay rights activists accuse the Republican governor of being anti-gay. We just want fair and equal treatment. That's all we've ever asked for. And now we can't even get that from the governor. Others believe the bill would set a bad precedent. My biggest gripe of the bill is saying to the citizens of California that we are going to take homosexuals and make them a special class citizens with rights and privileges that no other California citizen had. More demonstrations are planned today in California. Diana Kariki, NBC News, Los Angeles. About 5,000 marchers took to the streets of San Francisco, burning the California flag. In Los Angeles, another 2,000 protesters were on the streets, burning an effigy of Governor Pete Wilson. The governor was playing host to the president of Mexico at a nearby museum. It was Wilson's veto of a gay rights bill known as AB 101 that touched off the demonstrations. You said you supported AB 101 and gay and lesbian rights. But given the opportunity, you veto that bill. Other demonstrators smashed windows and doors at a state government building in San Francisco. And some of the Los Angeles marchers clashed with police at the hotel where Governor Wilson was supposed to be spending the night. Two police officers were injured in a scuffle and several arrests were reported. More trouble is expected today when the governor makes a public appearance at Stanford University. George Lewis, NBC News, Los Angeles. There were similar protests in Los Angeles near the Hollywood Bowl. It was the fourth straight day of demonstrations against the governor. And as Linda Douglas reports, organizers say they will not let up. Governor Pete Wilson stayed in his office still refusing to comment on his veto of the gay rights bill. But his critics kept up the pressure. Gay Republicans reminded Wilson they helped him become governor last year. He failed us, his friends and supporters. But it's clear the governor didn't expect the vehemence of protesters who harassed him and have been marching in the streets. And there was more bad news for the governor. Nearly a year after he was elected, a new California poll shows a third of the public disapproves of his performance the worst job rating of any recent governor at this point in his first term. Just when the military was considering loosening its ban on homosexuals, a court has ruled that the ban may be justified because of the AIDS epidemic. Basically, they're saying the presence of gay people in the service would upset other people. Several recent court decisions said the military had to have a better reason, and that's why this latest ruling is important. It says the Pentagon may exclude gays because they might spread the fatal and incurable AIDS virus. Stefan's lawyer, Paula Edelbrick, called the decision outlandish. It presumes that all gay men and lesbians are infected. It presumes that heterosexuals are not infected. It does nothing to further the public health. It does everything only to further homophobia. Springfield in western Oregon. 
population 44,000. It hardly looks like a place you'd find a gay rights dispute, but it's the first city in America to pass a law prohibiting the local government from protecting citizens based on sexual orientation. Nor shall the city promote, encourage, or facilitate homosexuality. Gay rights groups campaigned against the measure, but it was approved by 55% of the voters in Springfield. Since then, there have been protest marches. The ACLU has vowed to challenge the ordinance in court, and city officials are in the middle. I think it sends a message of, of fear uh, and, and bewilderment and concern to people who are gay because they don't know what, how it will affect them. This is the first incidence of violence. The fight has become nasty. The Portland office of one of the gay rights groups was wrecked by vandals last week. More than 1,000 gay rights supporters rallied in front of the courthouse. Some sacrificed their privacy to back a cause they believe in. In the hundreds and thousands, you have answered with your will to fight for justice. And that fight for justice means laws. Laws that would protect homosexuals from being bounced out of their jobs and homes. We want the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag to really mean that there will be liberty and justice for all. It's Gay and Lesbian Pride Week. They're proud of who they are and what they stand for. That's why they march through downtown Louisville. We're human too, that we have rights just like they do, and that we deserve to be treated fairly. As the election draws closer, opposition to Measure 9 has increased. It would require Oregon schools to teach that homosexuality is abnormal, wrong, unnatural, and perverse, and prevent any law which would protect gays from discrimination. We don't agree to the idea that any citizen should be singled out and told they're not part of the whole, and we're going to beat this measure, period. Colorado's Amendment 2 says the state could not have any law where homosexual, lesbian, or bisexual orientation is the basis of any protected status or claim of discrimination. Opponents of Amendment 2 say it's not as strongly written as the Oregon measure, but they say the motives behind it are the same. Clearly in the state of Colorado, we're talking about sanctioning discrimination in our state constitution. We ought all to be concerned about that. Keith Meinhold is one of more than 1,000 service men and women kicked out of the armed forces each year for homosexuality. But Meinhold refused to accept the Pentagon's edict. He filed suit, one, but the Navy refused to reinstate him until the federal court threatened a contempt charge. While the Pentagon agreed to take Meinhold back, one official said it did so only as a procedural legal matter that it would take the California federal judge's order to a higher court. The next commander-in-chief has already pledged to wipe out the Pentagon's ban on gays, but senior officers will try to dissuade him. Gays say they voted for Clinton largely on such promises and expect them to be kept. He has demonstrated his support for gay and lesbian rights, and we believe that he will overturn the military ban um, soon after he takes office. I don't think we can change policy on the basis of uh, speculation about what President-elect Clinton may or may not do after he's inaugurated. Meinhold says, come what may, he'll keep up the battle to stay in uniform. George Lewis, NBC News, Palo Alto, California. The effort is directed at the entertainment industry to, to discourage celebrities, to discourage people of money um, to, who traditionally go spend their ski weekend in, in Aspen, Colorado, etc., to decide not to go to Colorado this season, that it's not a friendly place to be um, for civil rights. I don't know of any other group, minority group or majority group, uh, in, in the Denver area that is routinely subjected to bashing. And there was an indication today that Powell may bow to the inevitable on the issue of gays in the military, choosing instead to use his influence on the issue of troop strength and not the troop's sexual preferences. It is a very big problem for us, and it is not just the generals and the admirals who are saying it. 
we're hearing it, we're hearing it throughout the force. And so uh, uh, I'm, I'm pleased that the governor uh, has expressed a willingness to approach this uh, slowly and with caution. And uh, we look forward to the opportunity to work with him and with the new Secretary of Defense. Bye bye Bush! Bye bye Bush! Gays exulted on the streets. We're here! We're here! We're going to the White House! They celebrated in private homes across the country. We're here! We're here! We're going to the White House! For the first time in a race for the White House, gay and lesbian issues were an important part of the campaign. We can't afford to waste the capacity the contributions, the hearts, the souls, and the minds of the gay and lesbian Americans either. Like these lesbians and gays in Atlanta, they got into the political process in a big way. We've contributed, we think, about $3 million to the Democratic effort this year. We've got something like 10,000 volunteers um, through our organization's efforts and through other organizations' efforts all over the country. We, we have 350 volunteers here just in the Atlanta area who have been working since June. I think one of the reasons that uh, the gay and lesbian community has matured into a major force in American politics is the fact that 150,000 people died of AIDS. For the first time in history, we have a gay and lesbian voting bloc. This has never happened before. A lot of that credit is due to Bill Clinton himself. Not everyone is sure President-elect Clinton will keep his promises to gays. I am concerned because his transition team that he announced of uh, 48 people does not include anyone who is openly lesbian or gay. This is a centrist president. And we have a country that is in great turmoil over these issues. And I'm extremely concerned about follow through. Gays say it's their right to serve in the military as who they are. The reaction has begun. Senate Armed Services Committee Chairman and fellow Democrat Sam Nunn opposes Clinton on gays in the military. We ought to have thorough hearings, and I also know, because I've talked to him, that President-elect Clinton is going to talk to General Powell about this. He's going to talk to the Joint Staff about this. He understands that uh, there are people who have different views. Bill Clinton is a consensus politician, and so far, he still seems to be trying to build consensus. As long as there is a very strict code of conduct, which if they violate it, would lead to dismissal from the service or other appropriate sanctions. On the other hand, Clinton has stuck to his campaign promise to lift the ban against gays in the military, despite opposition from the Joint Chiefs of Staff and some powerful Democrats. It's given conservative opponents a field day. Uh, it's pretty foolish the first week or second week of your term to decide to pick a fight with a senior member of your own party. The issue is whether men and women who can and have served with real distinction should be excluded from military service solely on the basis of their status, and I believe they should not. I have asked the Secretary of Defense to submit by July the 15th a draft executive order after full consultation with military and congressional leaders and concerned individuals outside of the government, which would end the present policy solely on the basis of, <clears throat> excuse me, of this exclusion from military service, solely on the basis of sexual orientation, and at the same time establish rigorous standards regarding sexual conduct to be applied to all military personnel. So the single area of disagreement is this. Should someone be able to serve their country in uniform? if they say they are homosexuals, but they do nothing which it violates the code of conduct or undermines unit cohesion or morale apart from that statement. This compromise is not everything I would have hoped for or everything that I have stood for, but it is plainly a substantial step in the right direction. His face was stomped, his tooth kicked out, his leg cracked. Right beside their door, on another door, had a sign that said, support your local gay bashing in, in the Marine Corps. Some at Camp Lejeune fear gays could now become targets. There will be violence. There will be violence right here on this base. Marine leaders here have uh, continued to spread the word that uh, this type of behavior by Marines will not be tolerated.
a former army captain, says the military turns its back on intolerance. There are people right now in the Pentagon who have called me saying, we're going to go kill those blankety blanks. Today, Marines got a new order. Stick to fighting their country's battles and forget about their own. Bob Dodson, NBC News, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Aides say when Clinton visited the aircraft carrier Theodore Roosevelt, he was struck by the close quarters sailors endure for months at a time. With that in mind, he won't rule out a possible ban against gays serving at sea or in combat. The, the courts have historically given quite wide berth to the military to make judgments of that kind in terms of duty assignments. But if gays are denied duty in combat or at sea, it could derail their military promotions. Over the weekend, gay and lesbian groups demonstrated all over the country calling for an end to the ban on homosexuals in the military. This morning, the Senate Armed Services Committee will start the hearings with testimony and research on the history of gays and lesbians in the armed services. Committee Chairman Senator Sam Nunn has been strongly opposed to lifting the ban. My own position, I think I've made rather clear, but I've also made it clear that I'm going to listen to carefully the testimony, and my final assessment will be based on uh, the testimony we hear before the committee on both sides. And it's basically time that Sam Nunn understand we're here, we're queer, get used to it. Senator John Kerry, a Vietnam veteran, also wants the ban lifted. The United States military ought to be a reflection of the rest of America. And the rest of America has a population, almost 10 percent or more of which, uh, is gay. As soon as the hearings were gaveled to order, President Clinton got bad news. Senator Sam Nunn, the influential chairman of the Armed Services Committee, made it clear that his opposition to lifting the ban on gays is not likely to change. We must, in my view, move very cautiously. This caution, in my view, is not prejudice, it is prudence. Uh, Martin, the only thing I need to ask you some questions. Earlier this year, as a temporary compromise, the military stopped asking recruits whether they are gay. Nunn now says this may be the ultimate solution, allowing gays to serve as long as they remain in the closet. And if people keep their private behavior private, then uh, they have no problem. But that's not acceptable to gay groups, because homosexuals still could be kicked out of the military merely for saying they are gay. Even in this White House, some political taboos die hard. White House officials first tried to hurry the gay and lesbian leaders through a side entrance, out of camera range. They eventually got the front door treatment with Marine Guard and all. This group came for reassurances from Clinton and got them. Clinton told them, despite opposition from Senator Sam Nunn, he'd win a majority of votes in the House and Senate to lift the ban on gays in the military. He believes we will win this issue and is prepared to move forward on it. He also said he'd sign gay civil rights legislation, would sign an executive order banning discrimination against gays in the federal government, and name an AIDS czar, perhaps by next week. We all laughed when we talked about that this is indeed the gay 90s, um, and that this is the decade when uh, gay and lesbian America comes home.
It was one of the largest demonstrations ever in the nation's capital, and participants came from all walks of life. The goal of the march? To demand civil rights protection, more funding for AIDS research, and an end to the ban on gays in the military. Marchers wanted to demonstrate the strength in their numbers, political strength, and they featured an openly gay member of Congress. This today is a demonstration that gay men and lesbians will no longer submit to unequal treatment. White House Press Secretary Dee Dee Myers signaled that Clinton may be forced to back off his promise to lift the ban against gays in the military. I, I think he uh, recognizes that it's very difficult that there is not support in Congress for a complete lifting of the ban. The don't ask, don't tell policy would permit gays in the military as long as they don't reveal their homosexuality or engage in homosexual conduct. It's not don't ask, don't tell, it's don't be. Don't be gay in any fashion, explicitly or implicitly. Congressman Barney Frank, who's openly gay, argues it's a double standard that sodomy laws now in the military code are not enforced if you're straight. Now, it is not my impression, I am not an expert, that the military has strictly enforced the prohibitions against heterosexual oral sex. But don't ask, don't tell is something that the powerful chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, Democrat Sam Nunn, will accept. And he's got plenty of bipartisan support. Homosexuality is incompatible with military service. Faced with congressional battles over the budget and health care reform, Clinton has to pick his fights carefully and may now have to retreat on military gaze. Canby, Oregon has always been a quiet farming town. That is, until now. These days, Canby's in the gay rights crossfire. People here will vote Tuesday on whether to limit civil rights protections for homosexuals. The campaign has been intense. We need to stop the homosexual agenda, which is going to take over our town, our schools, everything, if we don't put a stop to it. We'll keep fighting it in Canby as long as it takes for everyone to feel that they can live there safely and be a part of the community. Last month, about 20 miles from Canby in the town of Cornelius, a measure restricting gay rights won in the local election. So activists on both sides now look okay, toward Tuesday. The votes in these next six communities are a crucial test of strength. Larry Shoup for NBC News, Canby, Oregon. In one small Oregon town, the anti-gay measure passed by just three votes. The measure prohibits local government from passing any law to protect gay men and lesbians from discrimination. So we won. Praise the Lord. <laughs> gay rights groups called it legalized discrimination. What they voted to do is to create a second class of citizen in their town or county. For the first time in the history of Oregon, we refuse to be quiet. Oregon's legislature is today considering a bill that would protect gay rights statewide in spite of local ballot measures. John Gibson, NBC News. This morning on the floor of the Oregon State House, a group of Democrats denounced the vote. I think we should be outraged. I think we, the legislature, have to take the lead. Gay rights groups who fought the measures now say it's essential for the Oregon legislature to pass a bill to ban discrimination against homosexuals. We can lose our jobs, we can lose our housing, we can be thrown out of a public accommodation. Those very facts show us that we need equal rights. A state Senate committee this afternoon passed a gay rights bill which now goes to the full Senate. Some Oregonians fear that if it fails, gays will launch a boycott against Oregon as they did against Colorado. George Lewis, NBC News, Los Angeles. Gay rights leaders are threatening legal action if President Clinton decides to accept that don't ask, don't tell policy for gays in the military. Final details are still being worked out on the policy which may be announced next week, but the president is said to be still leaning on a compromise plan that would let gays serve in the military if they keep quiet about their happening to be uh, sexually oriented one way or another. Asking an individual to be absolutely silent about who they are as a person 
is, is completely unjust, and it is definitely unconstitutional. Gay advocates say any compromise would amount to a retreat from the president's campaign pledge to repeal the ban on gays in the military. In making his announcement, Clinton drew applause from the military brass. And no wonder he had backed off his pledge to lift Secretary the ban Hassan against gays in the military. Well, the policy I am announcing today is, in my judgment, the right thing to do and the best way to do it. But Clinton's compromise was not good enough for some gay activists who blasted the plan. The Clinton administration today is now ushering in a new era of discrimination in America. Under the plan, gays could still be discharged from the service for homosexual acts, but not for simply acknowledging their homosexuality. Under this policy, a person can say, I am a homosexual, but I am going to strictly adhere to the code of conduct. That faces certain opposition from Armed Services Chairman Senator Sam Nunn, who insists homosexuality is incompatible with military service. And some in Congress won't let Clinton off easily. He hopes this will end it. The blazes it will. The fight is on. Hearings begin today in the Senate that could lead to legislation putting a permanent gay ban into law. Jim McLeshevsky, NBC News, the White House. None of Georgia led the move to legislate President Clinton's compromise plan on gays in the military, writing into law that homosexuality is incompatible with military service. But none left out a key part of Clinton's compromise, the part that says sexual orientation should not be a bar to military service. I think that uh, it is uh, a, a very tough issue. It's a balance between individual rights and the nation's security. Boxer of California tried but failed to keep Nunn's legislation from passing, accusing him of usurping the president's power by adopting a policy she said was more restrictive than Clinton's. The Congress has never before um, excluded a whole category of people from service because they told the truth about who they are. She and other liberals called the legislation a setback for the president's plan and for gays who want to serve. And what Congress will do by codifying this is to, in effect, deny them the full measure of their citizenship. The administration from the outset um, has demonstrated um, no leadership around this issue um, in Congress, and that has created an opening for opponents of lifting the ban to dominate the discussion. In this country, gay rights advocates are hailing Tuesday's ruling in Colorado that declared that state's anti-gay rights amendment unconstitutional. State officials say they will appeal the ruling to the Supreme Court if necessary. This was an enormously divisive and emotional issue. And today, Aspen spelled out specifics of that issue, telling commanders in the field exactly how the so-called don't ask, don't tell, don't pursue policy will work when it becomes effective in mid-February. No witch hunts can be conducted, but public hand-holding, kissing, physical conduct with someone of the same sex to satisfy sexual desire, anyone is reason enough for discharge. Homosexual acts, even a statement that demonstrates the likelihood to commit such an act, can end a military career. So can a homosexual marriage. Gay rights groups say they'll challenge the regulations in court. The new regulations are simply a repackaging of the same prejudice and discrimination that existed under the pre-Clinton policy. Get the Olympics out of Gay rights activists are taking on the Atlanta Olympic Committee in a fight over volleyball competition during the 1996 Games. They want this hall in suburban Cobb County removed as a site because the county has passed a resolution condemning gay lifestyle. Today, they tried to get the attention of International Olympic Committee President Juan Antonio Samaranch in town for meetings with local officials. I'm not safe in Cobb County. As a gay person with this anti-gay resolution on the books, it's open season on me. The county has been split by controversy since last fall when the Board of Commissioners passed the resolution. It said gay lifestyle is contrary to traditional family values. They came from across the country and around the world, carried a mile-long banner past the United Nations, several hundred thousand people marching peacefully through the streets of New York City. It was a parade billed as a march for human rights. But today's march was a reminder of how far gays and lesbians have come. I think there's a lot more openness for people. I think people don't have to be in the closet the way they used to be, you know. 
there's really so much of a difference because you're raised in a totally different mentality. I mean, I was, I don't remember a time before Stonewall. I wasn't born yet. Dorio Madon was at Stonewall and remembers the days when homosexuality was considered a mental illness. Well, the difference then, we had no rights. People were afraid to come out and say that they were gay or they were a drag queen. It's different now. 25 years ago, New York's Greenwich Village was the scene of a riot. Today, police watched quietly as gays and their supporters held a peaceful celebration of progress. Wes Combs, a public relations executive in Washington, D.C., wears a wedding ring, as does his lover of five years, Greg Albright. In their own eyes, Greg and Wes are married, but in the eyes of the law, they are not. And like tens of thousands of other gay and lesbian couples who live together in a committed relationship, they want to be. We have families that love us and accept us. We have friends that love us and accept us, both gay and non-gay. And we would like the opportunity, though, to be able to, in the eyes of the law, affirm that so that we are afforded the same protections and benefits that married couples get. Wes and Greg might get their wish. Last year, in a landmark decision, the Hawaii Supreme Court ruled that the state was discriminating against same-sex couples by not allowing them to marry. A legal battle continues there, and if the gay plaintiffs win, homosexual couples may marry in Hawaii in as soon as two years. But these marriages may not be considered legal in the couple's home states. Renee Fletcher and Ray Ann Tucker are lesbians, and like thousands of others, they've decided to have a family of their own. Estimates of how many openly homosexual parents there are in the United States vary widely, from one to five million. Estimates of the number of children of gay or lesbian parents range from 6 to 14 million. At least 12 states and the District of Columbia permit co-parent adoptions. Only two, New Hampshire and Florida, bar homosexuals from adopting. And in custody battles, four states deem gay parents unfit. Psychologist Charlotte Patterson, a lesbian. I think for children, far more important than the sexual orientation of their parents, is whether or not they have a loving home. The military announced immediately that it wants to appeal, saying the current policy that allows gays and lesbians to serve as long as they hide their homosexuality and commit no homosexual act is just fine and constitutional. And it seems to be working very well from the standpoint of the commanders. But in his ruling today, federal judge Eugene Nickerson called the policy inherently deceptive. Hitler, he wrote, taught the world what could happen when the government began to target people, not for what they had done, but because of their status. He's reduced this case down to what it's really about, the dislike of some service members for other service members because they say they're lesbian and gay. Only the six gays in the military who brought the suit, two Navy enlisted men and four Army reservists, are directly affected by the ruling. All remain on active duty pending appeal. But other gays who could be thrown out for serving openly, even though they're highly respected in the ranks, took some heart in today's decision. Well, for the moment, uh, uh, we're, you know, it's, it's score one for gays and lesbians, but uh... The government is bound to appeal. Anytime, I guess, you have a, a decision in your favor, it's always very encouraging. After several cities in Colorado passed local laws protecting gays from discrimination, state voters in 1992 passed Constitutional Amendment 2, wiping those laws off the books and forbidding legal protection for homosexuals. The amendment was sponsored by Colorado for Family Values, whose members said the state shouldn't give legal rights to gays. It is not something that American society should condone and affirm in front of our children or in front of our society in general as something that's good and beneficial to society. But the Colorado Supreme Court struck the amendment down, saying it improperly singled gays out by barring them and them alone from lobbying for local laws against discrimination. The state is now asking the U.S. Supreme Court to let the amendment stand. Opponents of the amendment say voters cannot deny gays access to their city councils and the courts. The state's constitution, although you can amend it to do all kinds of things, can't be amended to put any group of people outside the umbrella of state legal protection. In other news, lawmakers in Utah passed a measure that gives schools the power to ban gay and lesbian student clubs for student. 
The bill is highly controversial, and supporters, including Utah's governor, say communities should be able to control what goes on in their schools. After the vote, opponents called it a dark day for Utah. With this ring and before our friends... And should the law recognize the union between people of the same sex who take vows of marriage, it is becoming an issue in Washington and many states because legally married heterosexual couples can get government benefits often denied gay and lesbian couples. Congressman Bob Barr and eight other legislators introduced a bill to establish federal restrictions on who can legally marry. To reaffirm that for purposes of all federal laws, such as survivor's benefits, social security, tax purposes, that a marriage means a, m a marriage between a man and a woman only. Supporters of same-sex marriage say this is a human rights issue. What we're really doing is setting up gays and lesbians in this country for one more massive hit through a, a nasty, nasty national debate, polarizing people, targeting people. It was the day gay rights groups in Colorado and across the country were waiting for, the first Supreme Court decision ever upholding gay rights. Their legal battle began when Aspen, then Denver, and two other Colorado cities passed laws banning discrimination against gays in hiring and housing. Opponents of protection for gays got the issue on the statewide ballot, and in 1992, voters passed Amendment 2 to wipe those laws off the books and forbid legal protection for homosexuals. But today, by a vote of 6 to 3, the Supreme Court struck the amendment down. In the majority opinion, Justice Kennedy said the amendment improperly singled gays out and denied them legal protection available to others. So much so, he said, that it can't be explained by anything but animosity for gays instead of a rational purpose. In a stinging dissent, Justice Scalia said the amendment did have a legitimate purpose, preserving traditional moral values. The day when government could say, we're discriminating against gay people because we disapprove is over. But the Colorado man who helped pass the anti-gay rights amendment says the public disagrees. The American people are going to look at this ruling and inside their heart of hearts say, we don't care what the Supreme Court says, we are not going to make homosexuality okay. Georgia is recognized for At times minutes. the House floor sounded Thank like a revival yielding, meeting. The very foundations of our society are in danger of being burned. The flames of hedonism, the flames of narcissism, the flames of self-centered morality are licking at the very foundations of our society. You and me Conservatives for... argued that legally recognized gay marriages would send an immoral message and threaten the very institution of marriage. An openly gay congressman ridiculed that. I find it implausible that two men deciding to commit themselves to each other threaten the marriage of people a couple of blocks away. No state now recognizes same-sex marriages, but Hawaii is expected to within two years. This bill allows other states to ignore such marriages. It also denies gay couples all federal benefits now given straight couples, everything from Social Security to health insurance. An openly gay Republican accused his party of trying to score political points. Why are we so mean? Why are we so motivated by prejudice? intolerance, and unfortunately, in some cases, bigotry. Outside the Capitol, one of the couples which ignited the controversy told their side of the story. It was in 1990 that Janora asked me to marry her. And Nania Baer and Janora Dancel are suing the state of Hawaii for the right to marry and for all the legal protections that come with that. If I'm hit by a truck tomorrow, they may not let Janora in to see me or determine my medical care. She can't put me on her health insurance. Based on court rulings, Hawaii is expected to recognize same-sex marriages within two years, and that set Congress into an election year frenzy. In the image of God created he him, male and female. Armed with the Bible, Senator Robert Byrd argued that gay marriage flies in the face of thousands of years of civilization. To insist that male-male or female-female relationships must have the same status as the marriage relationship is more than unwise, it is patently absurd. The bill approved overwhelmingly by the House and Senate and supported by the President would deny federal recognition of any gay marriages. It also denies gay couples federal benefits now given straight couples, everything from Social Security to health insurance. Some decry it as gay bashing. This debate is fundamentally ugly 
and it is fundamentally political. When he got to the White House after midnight and without fanfare, he signed a bill barring federal recognition of homosexual marriages. In a statement, the president said he's long opposed same-sex marriage, but dislikes the legislation. The White House considers it a Republican attempt to make gay rights an election issue. David Mixner and Patrick Marston have looked forward to this appointment for weeks, a lunch meeting with their minister to plan their wedding. Mixner, an author and former advisor to President Clinton on gay issues, and Marston, an artist, know the ceremony will be merely symbolic. California won't issue them a marriage license, but they hope yesterday's Hawaii ruling could make their union legal someday. It's important to them, both as a statement and a civil right. The opposition has already drawn the battle. 30 states are considering legislation allowing them to ignore same-sex marriage licenses issued by other states. 16 states already have laws on the books banning gay marriage. And last spring, Congress passed the Defense of Marriage Act, which says that states are not obliged to recognize the legal gay marriage of another state. For as long as they've been around, all Boy Scouts have taken the same oath to do their duty to God and country. And now the California Supreme Court has upheld the organization's right to reject anyone who doesn't believe in God. In a unanimous decision, the court ruled the Boy Scouts are not a business, so they don't have to follow state civil rights laws and can set their own membership rules. The decision is a defeat for Michael and William Randall, thrown out of the Scouts at age nine when they refused to declare a belief in God. And in another case, the court ruled against Timothy Curran, an Eagle Scout rejected for assistant scoutmaster when he disclosed he's gay. The organization's message to gays and atheists is, scouting isn't for you. We certainly respect what you believe in, but we ask you to uh, believe in, permit us to believe in what we feel is right. California Congressman Frank Riggs proposed denying low-income housing money to San Francisco. He wants the city to stop requiring that outside contractors offer health benefits to same-sex partners. Republican Congressman Joel Hefley of Colorado had a proposal on the floor to block funding for a presidential order to prohibit discrimination against gay employees in the federal government. Hefley says he does not intend to sit in judgment of homosexuality, though he holds certain opinions about it. Do I think it's just another natural uh, manifestation of, of humanity? No. I think something uh, has gone wrong in the process. I draw my strength from the teachings of Jesus, which I see as teachings of love and acceptance and justice for people. I certainly don't find condemnation in those teachings. What they figured out, I guess, was, well, maybe of all the targets, the gay and lesbian people have the fewest friends and we can go after them. And the right wing, for reasons I don't understand, um, obsesses about us. I think sometimes gay bashing plays conveniently to the fringe. And I think that's what is happening here. A test of American attitudes could come from four congressional races where lesbians are running for office as Democrats. Although none is the front runner at the moment, all four are hopeful. Joe Johns, NBC News, Washington. For James Dale, it was vindication. Ten years after, the Boy Scouts told him he was no longer welcome. To be gay is just one small part of who I am. It's not, it's not the defining characteristic of who I am. So the Supreme Court of New Jersey agreed that, agreed with my record. Ruling unanimously, the court sided with Dale, saying the Boy Scouts ban on homosexuals is illegal. But Dale's expulsion from the group in 1990 was based on prejudice, not specific Boy Scout regulations. Dale spent 12 years in the Scouts, winning a sheaf of merit badges, promising an appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. A Boy Scout spokesman insisted they're a private, voluntary organization, not subject to anti-discrimination laws. The reason why I pursued it and I continue to pursue this is because the Boy Scouts taught me about what's right and what's wrong. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out that this is wrong. It apparently will take the Supreme Court to finally decide if it's legal. Pat Dawson, NBC News, New York. It was a gruesome discovery at this fence. Late Wednesday afternoon, as the sun was setting, two bicyclists approached. And at first, they said it looked like a scarecrow had been tied to the fence. Instead, the lifeless, savagely beaten body of 21-year-old Matthew Shepard, a University of Wyoming freshman, a gay man, barely alive tonight, in a coma, brain damaged, and on life support. Today, two young men, Russell Henderson 
and Aaron McKinney, who whispered an obscenity as he came into court, were charged. In the county of Albany. Kidnapping, robbery, and attempted murder. A hate crime, according to police, who say the two met Shepard in this Laramie bar, tricked him into believing they were gay too, then the three left together. It was 1 a.m. Wednesday morning, but Shepard, a small man, was allegedly beaten with the butt of a pistol, burned with cigarette butts, and finally tied spread eagle to the fence, left to die. Wyoming is known as the cowboy state. It's one of eight without a hate crime law. For the last five years here, state lawmakers have defeated attempts to legislate against hate, saying they didn't want to give preferential treatment to homosexuals. Across the country, hate crimes based on race, religion, and sexual orientation are rising. 8,759 incidents, according to the latest 1996 FBI statistics. At the University of Wyoming here in Laramie, students say while there is tolerance on campus to those who are different, it's another story off campus. The homecoming parade at the University of Wyoming. After the band and the floats and the hoopla, a quiet reminder that something ugly happened here this week. We need to get out and show people that there are people that care. The homecoming parade doubled in size as more joined to make a statement against hate. This is a terrible crime against a person, no matter if he's black, color, gay, or white. You don't treat people that way. At the homecoming football game, 15,000 people stood in silence for Matthew Shepard. Less than two miles away, down a dusty country road, at the fence where the beating took place, another smaller sign that Shepard will not soon be forgotten here. Jack Chestnut, NBC News, Laramie, Wyoming. Violence and hatred starts in small ways and grows and grows and grows. The cruelty and hate that was inflicted on Matthew Shepard cries out to each one of us to examine our lives and to do it honestly. The victim of what many people say was a hate crime in Wyoming this morning has died. 21-year-old Matthew Shepard was found beaten and unconscious last week near the University of Wyoming. Shepard was gay, and while police say robbery was the primary motive for the attack, gay rights groups call it a hate crime. Shepard remained on life support at a Colorado hospital until this morning when he passed away. A hospital spokesman said Shepard's family is grateful for support from around the world. Like the good, caring son that he was, um, he was able to remove from them the guilt or stress of having to make that decision. They said that uh, he came into the world premature and he left the world premature. They're most grateful for the time that they had to spend 